pick your lane in the beginning. It doesn't have to be the mm -hmm. right lane. Just pick right. a lane. So if, if you're going to wholesale, then wholesale. Mm -hmm. If you're going to flip, then flip. If you're going to be a buy and hold investor, be a buy. It's like focus there. Yeah. Um, section eight clients. Uh, do you get like a list of people? My name is Eileen and um, I just recently. Okay. Okay. Um, so think about your workflow again. You I don't know how to do it. I know how to do it and, and I'm trying to instruct other people to, to do better in their business, but I also have to do better in my business. So what, what advice would you say for, for like a beginner who's say on a budget? at the moment, um, just starting out, trying to, you know, trying to get their feet wet with real estate, um, you know, things like that, whether it be a new flipper or a new wholesaler, um, you know, or just a new investor period. Yeah. So first of all, it's time or money. You got one or the other, if you have both great, yep. but anybody says you don't need any money to do this. Um, you better have some time. And so you mm -hmm. said, if somebody's on a budget, you better have some time or you better be willing to put in some time. Because if okay. not, it's not just going to fall in your lap. Like you're not, you might get lucky. You might get lucky on the first one, right. but it's not just going to fall in your lap. So uh, the other thing that I would say is pick, pick your lane in the beginning. It doesn't have to be the mm -hmm. right lane. Just pick right. a lane. So if, if you're going to wholesale, then wholesale. Mm -hmm. If you're going to flip, then flip. If you're going to be a buy and hold investor, be a buy. It's like focus there. Yeah. Because th what that does is it allows you to pick the things that you need to focus on getting better at or do. Mm -hmm. So if you're a wholesaler, you got to be really good at marketing and sales. It's yep. that simple. You got to be good at marketing and having sales conversations with somebody. If you're really great at marketing and sales, you have a background in that, I would recommend you start there. Yep. Um, flippers, you got to be good at project management. So raising money and mm -hmm. project management. And so they're very different skill sets. So I see people all the time, they're great wholesalers and they're like, oh, I'm going to add flipping in and their flipping business kind of doesn't do so well and their wholesaling business does well and they just kind of even out. So mm -hmm. just, just pick a lane. Like I, I started as a flipper, then I became a wholesaler primarily after that. Just, mm -hmm. I just liked it more. I got tired of the retail stuff. I got tired of the inspections. I got tired of some of those yep. things. So just pick one. And what do you, are you really great project manager? Are you really great with budgeting? Are you really great with like creating a scope of work and, and managing, uh, like contractors and holding them accountable for what they're doing and managing mm -hmm. that kind of project. If you are flipping would be great for you. And then right. you can figure out the areas that you need to focus on. The third thing that I would say is get really tight on your criteria and where you want to operate. Don't take okay. anything in the beginning, mm -hmm. in the beginning, you're on a budget. You just need to get one deal. So what I would mm -hmm. say is pick a zip code or two zip codes, maybe that are transacting the most and own that market. So realtors call it the farm area. We should use the same terminology. Yep. Find your farm area, go deep in there. If I don't have any money, I'm going to like the pawn shops. I'm going to the liquor stores. I'm going to the bail bondsmen's. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at that area. Like so, there's somebody in that area that knows everything that's going on and somebody is going to be in distress. You don't need to find a distressed house. You need to find a, find a distressed person. So somebody who's going through distress that's willing to trade equity for ease and speed of transaction, because that's what you provide in in any of these. And if I'm a whole, if I'm a flipper, I'm probably just working with wholesalers and realtors. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do any direct mail marketing. I'm not going to do any direct to seller marketing. I'm just going to go find a deal from realtors and wholesalers. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm known for. I'm a wholesaler. I've been a wholesaler for about three years, going on four years now. So um, it's I've had to learn all the different strategies: the buy and hold, the the creative finance, the flipping and for the areas. And I stay local to my Metro Detroit area. Everybody's like, well, why don't you do a virtual market? Because I don't know that market. I know this market like the back of my hand. So I stay here at the moment. Now I could go to other markets and I can give you advice and somebody else and like do what my normal criteria, but keep in mind, I, I don't know that area like the back of my hand. I know this area, you know? So, you know, the, you, you can, um, you can do like, if you go, you can go really deep. You guys can go way yeah. deeper than you think that you're going right now. 
Um, yep. But when somebody doesn't have a lot of money, the problem is they always cast too big of a net. So, and they, yep. you know what? A lot of times in the beginning, you're like, you know what? I don't want to go <laughs> where so many other people are going. I'm going to go mm -hmm. over here where nobody is flipping or wholesaling or any of that stuff. And I'm going to go find a deal over here because there's no competition. No, 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 no. They're over there because there's money over there. There's no money over here. Like, don't come over here. There's not a lot of money over there. So when you're starting, if there's a yeah. hundred deals going on a month in one area, you just mm -hmm. need one. Yep. If you go over to a place where there's five deals a month going on, you still need one, but your odds are way worse of you getting that one. So go to an area that's transacting the most. What area mm -hmm. is transacting the most? Where are the most flippers working? Where are the most wholesalers making money? Um, a quick story. There was an area in Pensacola where uh, it was a zip code that I said, I'm never going to do business there. It was like the, uh, maybe you'd see a gun every now and then in a shooting, but it's like a pretty bad knife area, like kind of dangerous, like just not the place that you would go to at night. Uh, I wasn't, wouldn't feel comfortable like going with my family there. And I was like, I'm never going to that zip code. Mm -hmm. Well, if you fast forward two years later, we made half of our money, half of our income for the whole company. We we're doing mm -hmm. like two and a half million dollars in that one zip code. Wow. Because we were wholesaling deals to landlords. We were getting a ton of deals there. There's a ton of distress. There's a ton of opportunity. And it was a zip code I said I would never go to. It's just because I'm not going to flip there doesn't mean I, I, I can't wholesale houses in there. And so I had to find the people that were buying in there, but it was transacting like crazy. Like the, off, yeah. the cash transactions that were happening there, was, there was a ton of them. And I had to get mm -hmm. to know that area. I had to know what streets to not to just say no to or who would buy the houses in the most dangerous areas from us. And because right. there's just tons of opportunity there and the white collar areas, the really expensive areas and houses that I wanted to live in with my family, they don't, most, most of them know realtors and they're, they're mm -hmm. selling through a realtor, not off market. They not, don't have a ton of distress. And if they do, they'll find it. So those are some things that I would recommend if you're just getting started is like, go to the pockets with transacting the most and start there. Cause you only need one. You just need that one deal. Let that yep. money fund your next one and the next one, and the next one. Most definitely. So Dean actually asked, what are Bill's thoughts on virtual wholesaling, specifically locking up deals on the MLS? Uh, so, so virtual wholesaling, I think like we did it. We, we were in Pensacola. We were virtual wholesaling in Chattanooga and, and Nashville. Like we were all virtual, yep. frankly. Okay. Um, the, the only, the thing that I, I would say about virtual, I've seen these people go national and just like lock up deals and sell them. I, I don't like the, I don't like the ethics of that specifically yeah. of just like buying high and just let's see what we can do. And then canceling the contract um, yeah. because you don't know the market that well. One thing that, that I always recommend if I'm going to go somewhere virtual, when I pick what it is, I'm either going to pick a lookalike market to mine. So a market mm -hmm. that has similar demographics, similar um, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, so Chattanooga and Pensacola looked very similar. Okay. Population, the job market, the different, like they have expensive houses and really cheap houses. Um, and so, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I had a competitive advantage because I was living in Nashville and everybody in Nashville at all the RIAs was like, it's too expensive. I can't find rental houses here. I can't find flip houses here. And so I was pushing all those people to Chattanooga. So I was building a business in Chattanooga and pushing them mm -hmm. all to buy from me in Chattanooga. And so I had this idea that what if it was only an hour and a half away? What if everybody yeah. in Nashville could buy from me in Chattanooga? And so that worked really well for a couple of years till a lot of people caught on and started going to Chattanooga. And so, okay. and, and becoming a little bit more competitive there, but I was cleaning yep. up for like two years. And so that, and I, ne I never been to Chattanooga. I never went there once. I hired mm -hmm. somebody who was there, who knew the area. I also questioned a, a two people at the RIA who had done a lot of business there about every zip code. Like they told me, I sat him down. I think I bought the guy a cup of coffee. I was like, her, saw him at a RIA meeting, told him what I was doing before I was, I mean, I was doing a lot of business in Pensacola. So I had a resume. To, yep. to back up why we should go to coffee. And then, I mean, a laundry list of everything that was going on in the zip code. So what I would recommend is, is there somewhere that you lived before? Is there somewhere that you grew up? Is there somewhere that you know very well? Is there somewhere that you have a competitive advantage of? And that would be an area that I would, I would look at some of those cities because mm -hmm. we were underwriting like Jacksonville, which I had been before, um, mm -hmm. you know, Maryland, which is another place where I grew up as a kid. Um, so there's certain areas that I know that I've traveled to. I kind of understand them. I can learn them and then take some time to get to know them before you just jump in. So that's my advice. I yeah. would, uh, I would recommend you, what competitive advantage do you have in the area and not just say, oh, 
I heard that was a good, good market. I'm just going to jump in and try to make a couple bucks because right. I, I think you're going to have a challenge kind of breaking in and, and scaling that up. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's my perspective. I know yeah. there's a lot of people out there that teach virtual wholesaling. They believe in it. They're, they, they say they're doing really well with it. Um, nobody's going to compete with me in Pensacola. Right. No, like I could, I know Pensacola. I know the zip codes. I know, I know like the back of my hand. I've been almost every street around that area. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I've lived there four different times. I, I know okay. that I can, I, I've done, I've, we, we did like 50% of the cash transactions per year there for years. And so, yeah, I just, I don't think that there's a virtual wholesaler that's going to come in and beat me in my, in my local area. They might get one or two deals, but they're not building mm -hmm. a brand reputation there and things like that. So it's just, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah, we're having this issue right now where there's a lot of either virtual wholesalers or brand new wholesalers that come into the Detroit market. And Detroit comping is very different. In my opinion, it's like one of the hardest markets to comp that I know of anyways, because it's literally street by street, block by block. So you can, you can go outside. If you go one block outside of a neighborhood, it will look trash. And one block inside that neighborhood could be a four hundred thousand dollar house, you know. Yeah, I mean, use so, that as your competitive advantage, right? Yeah. And so I don't, I don't like, you know, bash the people that are coming in. I really just say, no. hey, this is why we stand out. This is why, yeah. this is why I would recommend you go with us. This is what we do. Um, we actually yeah. created like a sheet that had all these like, it was, it was like, uh, it wasn't really us versus them, but it was like these are all the things yeah. that we provide. Have you asked these people that that are going to come in after us? It was like a leave behind. So it's like, do they have proof of funds? Do they have all this, mm -hmm. like all the stuff that as a new wholesaler, you're like, oh, I hope they don't ask me that. I hope they don't yeah. ask me that. And so we're just setting up landmines for, for using our competitive advantage to not bad yeah. mouth anybody or talk about how we're better than other people. It's just say, hey, here's all the things that we provide. If anybody comes in that gives you a better offer, make sure you're asking them all this stuff. Like, what are their reviews? Go look at them on Facebook. How many deals have they done? Like all of those things. Like what's their reputation in the market? Have you ever heard of them before? Because we're just basically setting up the fact that we are a professional organization that has done, you know, thousands mm -hmm. of deals at this point. And we, we you know, we have, here's our reviews, here's our testimonials, here's all the things that, yep. um, that, you know, you're going with a reputable company versus, you know, somebody who comes in. But when I was new, I would say, you know what, that big company can't support you the way that I can. You know, I'm yeah. the one that you're going to talk to. I own the company. I'm the one you're going to talk to. I'll be the one at the closing table. I'll be the one that walks you through this whole transaction. And I'm going to be using my money because a lot of those houses I was buying or I would yeah. buy. So like I try to figure out what my competitive advantage of when I was small and when I was big. So you should be doing the same thing. Yeah, most definitely. And that's actually what I do a lot of JV deals as well. And so there's a lot of that's how I know a lot about this is the either the new wholesalers or virtual wholesalers. And, um, so I give out a lot of advice. I told, I tell people this, you can give me any property to look at. I'll look at it and I'll give you my 100% honest opinion, even if, whether we work together, or we don't work together, you know, so that, that way people can come to me with a deal, even if they don't have it locked up, I'll let them know what I think buyers in this area will pay for it. And we can work backwards and we can work together on it. Um, and go from there. So that's great. And I don't ever go behind anybody's back to steal a deal or anything like that. Just ethically, that's just who I am. So I mean, you, well, you could do that yeah. once, but then everybody's going to find out about it, and you're you're not going to make it. Exactly. Yeah, you build a reputation, you know, and yeah. it, it's just it happens. So I'm here for the long haul, no matter what. So. Nice. Um, Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I